welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to do another Call the Midwife Reacts video because you loved the last one. If you're new to my channel, I'm Mama Dr. Jones. I'm an OBGYN physician and mom to four. This channel is all about work-life balance. So we talk about my work as an OBGYN and we talk about kids and parenting and guilt. Everything we talk about on my Instagram, but in way more detail here. If you're interested in those things, feel free to subscribe. We have a lot of fun here. Like this video and let's just jump into Call the Midwife season five. Episode 8. I seem to remember we helped shell peas number two, three, and four. I hope we haven't done anything to offend. I'm going to the clinic at St. Cuthbert's. They want me to have it in hospital on account of my age. So sounds like she is having her fifth baby and has been recommended to have the baby in a hospital instead of at home with one of the midwives. I guess a few reasons that they would maybe recommend that is if her age made them worried that she was going to have a complication. So things that increase with older age and pregnancy, and that doesn't mean you're old, it just means older than average, would be things like hypertensive disorders, blood pressure issues, complications during the labor process or the delivery process, having babies who have genetic conditions. Each time you have a delivery, your risk of having a hemorrhage increases. I don't want to turn around and I don't want to look at you because if I do, I'll see you putting your hand in your back and rubbing your belly and huffing and puffing when you bend over. And I can't do any of those things. Diane, you put all this on yourself. I'm going to say that it's mine. I mean, what's going to happen? How will it get out? Take you through that when the time comes. Please. So it sounds like she is pregnant with a baby that the dad left or there wasn't a good relationship there and in that time period that was not something that was socially acceptable at all especially for young moms and she does look pretty young. So they're hiding the pregnancy by pretending that her mom is pregnant and she's going to act like she delivered the baby and it's hers and it's really going to be her daughter's I guess. Um, it sounds like they're going to just try to have the baby at the house with no help. Obviously, as somebody who has seen a myriad of complications related to labor and delivery, I think that's a really bad idea. I hope I'm gonna wet myself. Brace your legs together. Don't let anything come out in a rush. Sometimes when your water breaks, it is a big rush of fluid and sometimes it's just a little bit of a leak, but there's not much you can do to control it. It's not like urine where you can control your urine stream or how fast it happens or anything like that. If your water's gonna break and it's gonna be a lot, it's gonna be a lot. And if it's gonna break and it's gonna be a trickle, it's gonna be a trickle. That usually has to do with where the amniotic sac ruptures, a big break down close to the cervix, then a lot of fluid can come out. The small leak in the upper part of the uterus, then a lot of times it's not a lot of fluid. If the baby's head is really engaged on the cervix, then pushing down like this, no matter how much of the amniotic sac is broken, sometimes a lot of fluid doesn't come out. Uh, uh, no, no, it's, it's a good girl. Bite down, bite down. I hate this. I can't imagine how terrifying that would be to be in a situation where you feel like you can't tell the truth to the people around you. And as a mom, you have to put your daughter through something like that. And then on top of all of that, for the daughter to be in such terrible pain and not even be able to express it how she wants, just the whole situation is so sad to me. Well, I mean, given the situation, I feel like that delivery went really well. As per usual, Call the Midwife does an excellent job of showing the birth process looking relatively realistic. Her water broke, she went into labor shortly thereafter. Obviously that doesn't always happen, but it does happen pretty frequently like that. She labored and then 
she delivered her baby. She has impressive pain control that I would not have. And if you've watched my birth story, you know that I would not be able to control myself like that. I guess if I was in a situation where I had to, I probably could, but man, I, that is so, I just feel for her, like my heart hurts for that situation. I just wanna go to bed. You can't, you gotta get rid of the afterbirth. None of my talk is long. It's not right. Stay in here and don't move. Mom, don't leave me. So it looks like she has retained placenta, which is where the placenta stays in for an abnormally long period of time after the baby is born. This can happen for a variety of reasons. The normal time frame for placental delivery after the baby is born is about 30 minutes. That's kind of the upper limit. Most of the time it's much faster than that. Um, but once it goes to about 30 minutes, you're starting to get a little bit anxious that it doesn't make sense why the placenta hasn't delivered yet. The reasons for that can be just that it's a stubborn placenta and it doesn't come out. The uterus is contracted down around it or it needs a little bit of guidance. You can do active management to kind of pull the placenta out. You don't wanna to pull too hard though. There's some badness that can come with that. And then one of the really feared things that can happen that cause a placenta to stay in is abnormal placentation like placenta accreta or placenta increta, percreta, things like that, which is essentially where when the placenta grows inside the uterus, it has a connection like this. So if this is uterine wall and this is placenta, it grows and it should have a blood vessel connection in the middle. If the placenta has blood vessels that grow abnormally deep into the uterine wall, into the muscle of the uterus, then that is called abnormal placentation and it's basically an adherent placenta. So it can grow into several layers into the muscle, all the way through the uterus, through other structures in the abdomen like the bowel or bladder, and that's called placenta percreta. That is a life-threatening complication even in time periods like right now every day that's a very high mortality complication to have many times we know about this before delivery now because it's associated with a few things that we can pick up one of those is the more c-sections you've had the more likely you are to have a placenta that's abnormally adherent and if the placenta on ultrasound is located in the front or anterior in the uterus, which is where we make the incision on a C-section, in somebody who has had several C-sections, then we'll look really close on ultrasound to make sure we don't think that it's grown through or into the uterine scar from the last C-section. It is still really uncommon, but it's much more common in people who've had multiple C-sections. Now, if a patient has a placenta previa, meaning the placenta has grown over the top of the cervix, and they've had previous C-sections, then their risk of an accreta or abnormal placenta, abnormally adherent placenta is way higher. In any patient who has a placenta previa, especially if they've had one or two or three, and especially more than that, C-sections, we really look closely and are on high alert for this complication. It would be really rare, and I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I'll look up the actual percentage like risk of abnormally adherent placentas in somebody who's having their first baby, but I think it's relatively low. So I don't know if that's what she has going on, but that's one of the really scary things that can happen when the placenta is um, not coming out within a normal time frame after delivery. Oh, and the only way to fix that is to do a hysterectomy. So if you pull on it and she has an abnormally adherent placenta, it's not just that it will eventually come out, it's just hard to get out. You will cause massive hemorrhage, very quick hemorrhage. And it's this is something that people die from even in this current time period that we live in. Usually that's not, at the time of vaginal delivery, because again, I would say 99% of the time we anticipate if this complication is going to happen because we have pretty reliable ways to pick it up, but not all of the time. And sometimes people don't have prenatal care and come in with this complication. But again, it's still really rare and it's very rare not to know about it. You fix 
a placenta which is abnormally adherent because of an accreta or percreta by doing a hysterectomy and we call that cesarean hysterectomy and I won't go into all the details of abnormal placentation right now. That would be a great topic for a full video. We don't even know if that's what this person has, um, but yeah, that's what comes to my mind. And I hope she's going to get help, but it scares me that she left her daughter alone. I know they don't have a phone probably, but ooh, nobody even knows and she's all alone. I just delivered a baby and the afterbirth hasn't come away. It's been more than an hour and a half. The placenta can take its time, but I expect you know that from your training. Employ Brand Andrews. And uh, don't forget, good pull on the cord. Thank you, Doctor. Best of British. It is okay to do some gentle traction on the placenta in some situations, um, but this would probably not be one of them where you'd want someone who doesn't know what they're doing to do that. <laughs> I don't like that. And see what's causing all this pain. You try an inversion. I only did what the doctor said. I only pulled on the cord because the afterbirth was stuck. You pulled too hard, Thora. It isn't just the afterbirth that's come out. It's Diane's womb. The umbilical cord was attached or is attached to the placenta. And when you pull really hard on it, a couple of things can happen. The umbilical cord can detach from the placenta and that makes you have to go in and remove the placenta manually, which is not a fun or good thing to have to do, but it's not an emergency. It sounds like she pulled really hard on the umbilical cord. What happened instead of the umbilical cord coming off was that the placenta, which is still attached to the uterus up here, it turned inside out with the cord and the uterus was still attached and it inverted the uterus. So this is called a uterine inversion. Why is this a very scary and emergent situation? Because what happens is that if the placenta detaches, and sometimes even if it doesn't, there can be sudden massive hemorrhage. You can go into shock and essentially your circulatory system shuts down and you can have other complications related just to that even if you're not bleeding. Most of the complications related to uterine inversion though happen related to hemorrhage. So the management at this point, what they need to do is try to put the uterus back where it belongs. The first thing that you would do with that is once the uterus is inverted like this and the placenta is there, don't remove the placenta. Leave it attached because if you take it off, it will almost certainly cause massive hemorrhage. So if it's still attached, use that to your advantage and you want to use a fist like this to make the uterus kind of take its correct shape around you and replace it up into the body. Obviously, this is a horribly uncomfortable thing to do in someone like this who does not have any anesthesia. If a patient has an epidural, that makes it a little bit easier. Clearly, they didn't have that option here. So that is very painful. If you can't get the uterus to go back that way because it's either contracted down because you still have contraction hormones like oxytocin running through the body, then you give the patient, at least nowadays, obviously they aren't gonna do this here, you would give the patient a uterine relaxant like nitroglycerin or terbutaline to cause the uterus to stop contracting and help you push it back up. That's a double-edged sword because once you do that, the uterus is relaxed and it's more likely to bleed, so you're increasing the hemorrhage. But if you can't get it replaced without doing that, that's step number two. If you've tried to replace it and you've given uterine relaxants and you've tried again to replace it and you still can't replace it, you need to take the patient emergently to the operating room and make an incision on the belly, identify where the uterus was at and how to get it back in is procedure called a Huntington procedure, which is essentially where you find where from the top of the abdomen, you're inside the belly now, you're looking down into the pelvis and the uterus is out of the body. You grab the top
top of the uterus, which should be sitting up here, but is way down here outside of the body, you essentially try to replace the uterus by taking the round ligaments and gradually working them back up into the body. You should anticipate massive hemorrhage starting whenever you get the uterus back in, whether you're able to do that manually or you have to go into the operating room to do it. And the first thing you should do as soon as you get the uterus back in is to give uterotonics or something to make the uterus contract and help decrease bleeding and keep the uterus in place. The patient should be getting lots of IV fluid. The patient should have pain control if you're in a situation where you can provide that. I am thankful when I watch things like this that I work in this time period in a hospital. Flying scope will take half an hour to get here. That's all right. We can manage splendidly on our own, can't we? Yes, we can. I admire her ability to remain calm and talk to the patient, let her know what's going on, work with what you have. I mean, if you can't get an ambulance, then what option does she have? I think she's doing the right thing for the situation she's in. Um, and I think it, she's gonna try to replace it. <laughs> it's back in place. <laughs> she's lucky. It's not always that easy. Follow them to admissions. Unfortunately, we can't trust Thoris to tell the truth. It might affect Diane's treatment. They still need to take her to the hospital because the placenta is still in and they need to figure out why it won't come out. They need to get it out and check on her, make sure her vitals are stable. If it was now, she would need antibiotics. We would get the placenta out either manually if we thought it wasn't abnormally adherent for a reason that needed surgery. Um, but I think with how significantly it was attached, there's a decent likelihood that she's going to need a hysterectomy. And um, yeah, I don't know if they're gonna show that or not, but it's really sad. I could have killed you. I didn't want you ruined. I'd rather lie all my life, all your life and his than tell the world to take a running jump. People are gonna wonder where your bump went. If they ask me, I'll tell them the truth. People do crazy things when they feel like they're backed up against a wall and I think she probably was doing that because she felt like it was the only way to protect her daughter and her family. Um, but you can just tell by this conversation like what a come to Jesus moment she's had and how, how she feels like it's put everything into perspective and she just wants to take care of her family. So my heart hurts for them but I'm glad to see this ending. It didn't really elaborate yet on what they did for Diane, but she must have had a hemorrhage somewhere because she's getting a blood transfusion. In that last scene, you can see um, a bag of blood hanging up there. Just take him. He's yours. Baby, I'm a mum mum. And I don't even know where to start. We just did. I don't know what medically ended up happening. They didn't really say. But I hope you learned something. Like this video. Subscribe if you want to. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind. And I will see you next time.